Brothers and sisters, misses and misters, welcome back to the Dented Cast. Another episode coming your way. My name is Dolby Maxwell. My partner in positive crime is Max Baumgartner. We started out with doing episodes uh, alphabetically, and today's episode is the D word. What's the D word? Death. Everybody talks about death, and it's ought to be so somber, and it's final, and it's sad. I don't know if it has to be that way. Well, first of all... You don't know you're dead. <clears throat> you know, everybody You, you else, don't know. Everybody right, else does. Everybody else does, and they feel the pain. The same is true when you're stupid. Speak for yourself. <laughs> so, no. I'm dead. He's stupid. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Brain dead. Uh, no, uh, but you don't. And, and then, depending on your beliefs. Now, this is, Doby is a self-professed agnostic. I'm not a, sure. Yes. I reluctant am, agnostic. Okay, reluctant agnostic is fantastic. Uh, I think it's total horseshit. Uh, but I am a believer. But it's so, a nice horse. Yeah, I am a believer. I really am. And so when you are talking to a believer and you talk about death, I think you should think about death every day of your life. I really do. Who says I don't? Well, I uh, not committing your own demise but doesn't have to be mine. like an app that says you're going to die someday. What are you going to do with the time right now? You know, like a little, like almost like a shot collar for your wrist. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and you look at the it's countdown. Like, yeah, 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 you're going to die someday because we spend too many, too much, too much time on the wrong stuff, man. You know, we keep going back as dented cans and reliving the things. Uh, those times, those horrible times with people who are dead. They already are dead. And then we're, we're replaying it over and over and over on a constant loop. Your job is to interrupt that loop because your time is limited. Your time's limited. We just did a episode on fun. It'll either uh, show up later or before this one, but look for the episode on fun. Dobie made some very valid points as the king of Uranus. Got to have fun. Uh, but death shouldn't be scary. Death for a caterpillar is a butterfly for the master, right? So death should not be scary at all. I don't think it should be. I think living your life dead is more, more damaging. I really do. I don't think, I, I think people are walking around dead right now. There's no life in them at all. They're just walking around dead. True. They're playing bullshit from the past. And so the past is robbing the future. And they're just not fun to be around. And if they suck the life out, it's like, oh my gosh. Sometimes it's like, I wish you were dead so someone could use your organs for some good. Well, and you're talking about uh, an instance of somebody who's a bad person, maybe? Bad person, maybe. Or like you say, aren't taking advantage of the opportunities they have. Okay. Like say they complain, bitch, moan, whine, piss, whatever it is. And it's like, <laughs> I don't want to hear it anymore. Just do, do something with it. Now, as you get to be a certain age, I think, you know, if you're over 30 or 40 or 50, as you get older, people around you that you've had contact with die and sometimes you're closer to the people than others and uh you want to be on a good relationship with them until the end sometimes you don't get a chance i just had three people in the last month as we record this pass away i mean my brother was one of them i had a great relationship with him another one was a, a comedian friend of mine and uh he was a, a ventriloquist and comedians look down on ventriloquists there's something wrong with those guys man you got your finger up a puppet's ass there's problems in your head somewhere <laughs> Right. So your whole hand, <laughs> not just your finger. So to make a long story longer, uh, I'm not going to say his name, but he was he took my comedy class, and he had been in it just as long as I have, and he was not a very good comedian, but he was a good person. I said, why are you taking my class? You're, you're doing this just as long as I did. And he said, well, uh, I, I need a new direction. Okay, that's fair, and I'll try to help you if I can. And Be a thing. chef. <laughs> yeah, a direction south. That's what your direction is. So, yeah, exactly. so he... he as the, the new students who had never been on stage before, through the weeks, through the class, they were getting it. He was getting worse, not getting it. So one, I, I, the whole part of the class is they get up in front of the class, me, and they do, they do their material, and we tweak and get better and improve. And this guy was getting horrible. So I, I stopped the class, and I said, what the fuck was that? You're wasting your time. You're wasting our time. The beginners are better than you. And if you don't get your head out of your ass next week, and tell me something about your personal life, about you. I don't want to, don't come back. 
and I was very frustrated. And I, maybe I said it in the wrong way because as a teacher, if you've ever taught, and I'm sure you had, some kids need a kick in the butt. Some kids need a pat on the head. And it's your job as a teacher to decide which is which. So I kind of did an audible at the last second, and I kind of came down hard on him. And I don't know. And at the, the whole week, oh, I shouldn't have yelled at him. So next week, he comes back. He says, well, uh, Dolby told me to tell something about myself. And uh, I'm going to do that. And my name is, and, and I'm gay. Wow. Where did that come from? Anybody have a problem with that? No, sir. Please continue. Max, he went on to do about 10 minutes of the funniest most pointed, non-mean-spirited. It was magnificent. He got a standing ovation at the end of a comedy class. I've been teaching for 25 years. Nobody has ever gotten a standing ovation. It's the one-of-a-kind thing. And he came over and he gave me a hug afterwards. He goes, that wasn't a gay hug. He goes, you're not my type. <laughs> Getting laughs off stage. I said, buddy, where was that all these years? He goes, I, I needed you to kick me to, to do that. And he changed his name. He said, you, you, I, I changed my name. He, goes, I, he knew me by my, my regular name, my birth name. And he said, I'm changing my name in honor of you. And he went to gay clubs and he put together his act. And he just had a life for himself. And every time I saw him for years after, he goes, thank you. Thank you so much. So he had a life before he died. Yeah, but he was himself. You see That's what, what I mean. Yes. Yeah. And, and he, you he, helped him live. That little kick in the balls was like, hey, man, and, and you're going to die someday. Yes. And every time he saw me, yeah. he acknowledged it and he thanked me for it. I said, no, no, thank you for yeah. taking it the right way. He died in a car accident last week as we record this. Mm. And I, I always called him and I just would check in with him. Hey, how you doing? And I had it in my mind, just like with my brother. My brother passed. Watch that episode. And I, 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 I didn't call him, Max. And it was, I just, you know, life gets in the way. I was going to call you. And I, I got a call for, and, he, and he passed. And I'm really sorry that I didn't get a chance to say one more time. Right. But I know he's in a better place because he's a good person. And, he, and to be able to just to get that little chiropractic tweak on his soul to let him live his life. And I know it made a major difference with him. That's what we want to do with this show. And, I, right. and thank you. You have a wonderful story. I wanted to open for you because you have the killer of all stories. I mean, you know, any pun intended. I, I don't know. I don't know if, you know, we were actually toying with the idea of having this one be about inspiration. Okay. Uh, That's Mark, okay, too. Mark McConnell uh, was um, a big influence on me. At the time, uh, my partner and I, Wayne, uh, radio partner in Omaha, Nebraska, mm -hmm. at a station called Sweet 98. Sweet 98! <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> that's an inside and joke. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. But we, we, we... <laughs> We had a charity called uh, Max and Wayne's Kids, okay? Mm -hmm. And so we would raise money. It was uh, Wayne's idea, and it was a fantastic idea, actually. But we, we would raise money for what was then called the Lead Transplant Center. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I met Mark McConnell there who had uh, cancer. And um, fairly bad, you know? Uh, and we developed a two-year relationship um, Mark had, you know, all of the, he just had such a, a happy, kind soul. When I met him, he was 12. My kids were still really small. Uh, and he would come for his treatments and just be knocked out. He wanted to play poker in his, uh, hospital room. So I would, his mother would usually be there. Wonderful soul. Her name's Jill. Uh, Still, she works in, you know, in, in at Disney today uh, as an offshoot of that. She wanted to be be happy and remember Mark, you know. Uh, Mark was a twin, and so and he had other siblings. So the family lived outside of Omaha quite a ways, and so they couldn't always be there because they were working and living their lives and going to school. So there were a few occasions that you know I would go and hang out with Mark, either in his. Uh, his hospital room, or uh, I would see him at the radio station, or they came to our house a few times. Um, but one of the things about Mark was uh, he always smiled. And even at his age, 12 and 13, he knew he was dying. He knew he was dying. He always he held the hope out, I think probably for everybody else, that he was going to make it through. But uh, he always, always 
held held that belief. He believed also that uh, every day should end with fireworks. That's okay. what he thought because he thought every day was a every day was a gift. Every day was a gift. He's right. He is right. You know, as dented cans, you rob yourself of the present by reliving the past in a constant loop. Okay, back to Mark. Uh, we had a big music festival there, uh, sweet stock. You can Google it. Uh, Wayne Coy put that together and, uh, I think is still doing it to this day, actually just revived, re- revived it. But Mark, uh, we brought Mark to that as a 13 year old. And this is back in the, you know, like in sync is popular. Mm-hmm. They came to our festival when they were wow. at the height. Of oh, nice. Wayne got that done, you know, sure. and a bunch of other people in the, in the 1999, 2000, um, that were really big were there. So there were 27,000 people showed up. Wow. And I remember, uh, Mark, you know, he walked out on stage with me. He was bloated because of, uh, the medicine, you know, so he didn't look like a 12 year old boy anymore. Cause it, you know, mm-hmm. all of the, just the medicine, he was getting p- what he called pokes mm. 20 times a day, oh. you know? So that was his life. And he kept smiling. And I, we had talked to him on the air before and I took him out. I don't want to cry. Oh, it's okay, man. I appreciate you sharing. I took him out on that stage in front of those, those people. That made me a believer in God. Just the energy with that little boy. The point with this is Mark is a good example. He knew he had limited time. He knew death, which is the topic of this, was going to be part of it. So he made the best of every single moment that he could. I remember uh, backstage at that same music festival, his, it was hot, you know, it was in June and and his, 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 uh, his neck was turning blue and it freaked me out. And, uh, I was like, Oh my gosh, Mark. Oh my gosh, man. He goes, I got to get you some help, buddy. I got to get you some, are you okay? Do you feel okay? And he started laughing and he goes, I'm sweating. I know, but you're blue. He goes, it's from my shirt because I just bought him a tie dye shirt. (laughs) (laughs) And it was, the ink was going all over. He said, yeah, see, it's ink. And I said, oh, okay. We just laughed and laughed and laughed. I also remember him, uh, one time I took him to, he liked video games and I took him to the, uh, some video game store and said, you know, let's get a, let's get a game or two. And, you know, he said, he, he liked that one. And I said, oh, you like more than that. And I remember telling him, Mark, get every single game you want. And he did. And he said, oh, we can't. I, said, I got it. Every single game you want. So he did. He had a stack. You can't live your life looking in the rearview mirror, man. You have to think about the windshield, you know. You've seen that before. I'm sure everybody has. Metaphor. You know, you're focused on such a little part of your life. Even if it was horrible, and it was for people watching and for Dobie and stuff, but every day counts. Every freaking day counts. And I wish every day did end with fireworks. It does at Disney, you know. I think that's what Mark's, Mark's deal was. Mark asked me to, uh, asked his mother when his time come, if, if she could call so I could be with him when he passed. And we were walking through a home improvement store, big box store. My wife and my two little kids, they're precious little babies at the time. And uh, it was a time when, you know, cell phones were just becoming late 90s. Flip phone, you know. I still have one. Yeah. And uh, open it up. And it's his mother. And she says, we'd like you to join us if you could. So I did. 
took my family home. And this isn't about me. I'm sorry to be a, I'm sorry to be, you know, emotional about this, but it's just so profound in my life. Uh, so I went there and the family was gathered around. I remember physically touching his body. We were all talking to him. He was, you know, medicated. And then I remember the machines flatlining and he was gone. In the transfer of energy, whether you're a believer or not, it's none of my business. I know I am. The transfer of energy was incredible because you could actually feel his presence leaving the room. And then his mom took all of the stuff off him and just cradled him. So the reason we're using this is as a, uh, as a reminder to live your life, stop, you know, stop focusing on all of the negative because it's robbing you. It's absolutely robbing you. And there's people like Mark McConnell who would have given anything to have another day to make people laugh, to smile. It's hard when you're full of pain to think about anything other than your pain. But you got to find the strength somehow and, and get it done, man. Thanks for sharing that story. I know it was... Uh... It was deep into your soul. You told me that the first time I wanted you to record it. And we're here not to look pretty. Sometimes we'll cry. Sometimes we'll laugh. But we're here for to be real. Life is real, man. And uh, you're not going to get this on Regis and Kathy Lee. We're our own channel. And we hope you're here regularly because life is a gift every day. And we're honoring Mark, honoring my brother, honoring you for being here too. Let's make it better. It's all we got. We're the Dented Cast, and we're going to see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. <laughs>